I think the, the main part of today's event will come later. All the really interesting part will come once I'm done. So I won't try to hold you guys too long to listen to me. But uh, so my name is Jana Rasmus and I'm European Engagement Manager with NHS 24, Scottish Centre for Telehealth and Telecare. And we have the distinct pleasure of being the coordinators of United for Health Project. So it's a project we're very fond of. Uh, and it's, but it's also a very big project, 35 partners, a lot of pilot sites and stuff. So it's also very complicated. But let me tell you, we're all working very well together to take this forward. And you'll be hearing much more about how uh, that today. The project itself is sits within one of the programs Jan just mentioned, the Competitive Innovation Program. So it's actually one of those that's been closed for the future, or say merged into Horizon. Uh, but it's pilot A, meaning it's got focus on scale. It's a big project. Uh, we're doing this over three years, started last year, uh, so we're just over halfway through actually at this point in time. We've got 10 million euros in, in fund or in, as a budget, of which 50% are uh, funded by the support of European Commission. We've got pilots across uh, 15 regions and sites that are targeting so diabetes, COPD, and congestive heart failure and hypertension in the boom. Thank you. Now, really what United for Health is about is really what fits this old movie that I'm sure everyone remembers, Back to the Future. We don't, I will explain why, what I mean by that in a little bit actually. But what I would like to say is we don't have a magic car that can transport us in time quickly. We don't have nice little tools that fly. Uh, we may have a really weird professor somewhere, or a scientist, probably maybe more than one, um, but probably not as notorious as, as this one. Um, if you can go. Okay. What I mean by that is, the, what is the future? Where are we trying to get to? I mean, we know things have to change, basically. We know the healthcare system, the way we deliver services are going to have to change. And they're going to have to change quite a lot, actually, in order to simply meet the demands there will be. Um, we know that ICT has been said to be one of the key parameters. It's not the only one that's going to help us get there, but it will be a key part of it, this. And we know that a lot of countries, a lot of organizations really have put e-health, telehealth, telemedicine, whatever you want to call it, AAL, etc., on the agenda, both politically, strategically, financially, etc. Uh, so clearly there's a huge, you can say, drive towards this. Next one. But at the same time, going back, you know, what have we learned so far? We know it's not actually, it's not that simple. A big change takes lots of time, actually. Uh, it doesn't just happen overnight. We don't have that magic car that just transports us within a few minutes into the future. We have to take go on a journey, basically, uh, a longer journey. We've seen many, many projects, clinical trials, even randomized controlled trials, smaller pilots, business cases, etc., being developed on this. Um, and we need to learn from them, uh, definitely. And one of the ways the United for Health has learned is we've gone back, for instance, and looked at uh, the, a European project called Renewing Health, which had more than 7,000 patients. It was based on RCT. And we've basically said, okay, we are using that as a platform for United for Health. So we're not copying it, but we're learning quite directly from it in order to go. So that's taking us back, and that's what's going to hopefully help us get into the future. So Renewing Health has basically what taught us, and this is of course in very broad frames because there's 21 different pilots with their own results in Renewing Health. So this is a very sort of generic, uh, uh, you can say, uh, results uh, overview. This telemedicine is at least as effective as usual care. In some cases, it has even been, it has demonstrated favorable uh, effects. There's a high level of satisfaction with patients and staff on the use of telemedicine and is not limited to a certain condition or a certain country or region. There's unclear or controversial economic and organizational outcomes. That's quite important because what United for Health wants to do is really wants to provide more evidence and think evidence that can really support decision making processes in the EU within regional health policies as well on how to deploy and what to deploy at scale. 
and the scale, in order to get to that, that little, that part, last part is really important, actually. So, and Renewing Health hasn't provided us with all that information. What we see here is that it's actually, we don't know exactly how to get that right yet. So that's why United for Health really, it's not doing a clinical trial, that's been done. Uh, what we call it is a study of deployment. So we're looking at real life and we're really focusing, so we are using the mass model uh, that's been used in many projects, which does make us do a very multidisciplinary assessment in the end, but there's two parts that are the main focus here. It's the economic aspects and it's the organizational part. We've got one common protocol for each of the chronic diseases across 14 regions. So where multiple sites across Europe are following a standard or a, a, a jointly agreed protocol uh, for diabetes, COPD and the chronic heart failure. This diabetes is what we call a lifelong monitoring service. It's focusing on self-management, self-monitoring, health coaching, uh, and is looking at a, a reduction in HbA1, HbA1c. Oh, no, did I get that? <laughs> Good. Well, if the doctor says it's right, I'm not with that. <laughs> um, for COPD, the, the focus is on a more short-term follow-up intervention at following a hospital discharge, um, and the hospital discharge being, uh, uh, or the admission was in relation to exacerbation of COPD, so not just any admission. Uh, and it's looking to how can we reduce readmissions uh, for this group of patients. Uh, remote monitoring is also focusing on avoiding admissions for this group of patients. So, as I said, it sounds really nice, it's a study of deployment, but what have we actually really learned so far? Is it just do it? Some people say it is. I think we will say probably not, just do it. Sounds a little too easy that way. So, we don't find that to be the case. We're a little sad about that, but uh, <laughs> what we have learned is there's probably what I would just three broad categories that probably takes one of the main, you can say obstacles or barriers or challenges, is supposed to be a more positive word, isn't it, um, that we've encountered. Uh, so technology, organization, and I've called culture, and I took that out probably a bit separately, although you can easily argue it goes under uh, organization as well. So around a technology, what we've seen is that the scaling part actually isn't that easy. And not just within aligning your organization to do it, but procuring and buying technology at the scale we sometimes are looking at. Uh, because it's been sold so far at, at smaller scales, so the pricing structure actually becomes very complicated when you go really high on numbers. Um, procurement processes are not a huge surprise but they have proven very challenging for many sites around these type of services. So um, interoperability, yes, definitely also an issue. People have devices already that things hopefully should you know, work with and stuff. Still issues are definitely around that. The functionality and connectivity is also a problem in many sites. And you'll be hearing more about these things in details when you come into, the, when we start the workshops about one of the, what would have been the exact uh, you can say, uh, problems that have been locally around this. Um, the organization, clearly this kind of change and stuff does require change management, but how do you really go about that? And do you have the leadership required to do this? Is it there? Because it's absolutely important. And a lot of people have had to learn that the hard way and actually find, you know, is it there? And have you involved everyone? Everyone. So, and that being the patients, the users, the staff, managers, everyone, the politicians also being a part. So it really is the whole spectrum. And that takes time, that engagement across everybody and allowing them to be part of the process is, is, is really time consuming and it's been difficult. Uh, and then this service redesign, again, that's one of the things we'll discuss more, but because we're aiming for quite a radical change, we are really aiming at redesigning how the services are delivered. Uh, so one thing is often you end up adding on, you know, these new services and stuff into how things are already happening or are being done, but you're not really looking at the overall uh, structure and how the services in general are being delivered and how you need to change that. Um, culture, 
there's definitely still issues around trust. You know, trusting in, trusting in the system. You know, is it safe for me to have my patients followed? You know, that is, but do I trust others to do their job as well? You know, if they are monitoring their data, will they do that well enough? Because maybe as a clinician at the end, you're still responsible, but you have to leave part of that responsibility with somewhere else that comes. So uh, the context, everyone thinks they're different. Everyone thinks they're unique. They're, the way they do things locally within their little organization, within their region, within their, we're all unique. So you have to really manage that. And that is where, again, the scaling becomes really difficult when you're trying to roll out across a lot of areas, a lot of organization, a lot of departments, even if you're rolling out regionally or in a country. Um, then the context is, is different. Evidence, we still struggle with that. Where's the evidence? You know. So in conclusion, what we have encountered, and be very honest about, is we have had delays, and that's even despite of actually good planning, <laughs> good preparation, knowing a lot of things, but extent of it still probably takes many by surprise. We've seen problems in both the inexperienced and definitely in the more experienced region, if we can say that. Uh, so it's not just, the problems aren't related to only when you start off, you know, when you're, when you're new to this. It becomes equally different, just probably different in a, or problematic in a different way when you are an experienced region really with big ambitions trying to scale quite considerably. Change really does take time and it does take a lot of involvement but we do see that there really is that willingness and commitment out there uh, to do this. So just to sum it up, there's already been a lot of experience generated. You'll hear just some of that today. Uh, but like I said, we're only halfway through, so lots more will come. Uh, and we would like to invite all of you to sort of uh, to keep learning from us. And you can do that continuously by um, visiting the Unite for Health uh, website. We've also got a channel on YouTube where things like this and other potential other sessions, presentations, stuff uh, are, uh, are posted and obviously we'll be at events and stuff as well and other. So thank you very much.